So hello students and welcome back to another video tutorial uh, for uh, CSIR, NetJRF, Life Sciences and ICMR and other entrance examination. In yesterday's class, we were talking about uh, biochemistry, the fundamentals of biochemistry that is about nucleic acid research we were talking about. Now, in this class, in today's lecture, what we will be talking about is that, please to turn off your, uh, your uh, sounds. Please do mute yourself, otherwise I will have to forcefully mute each and every candidate. Now see, in today's lecture, we will be moving forward. We have already studied all these particular topics. So what are the fundamental constituents of the nucleotides? What is nucleic acid? Uh, which are nucleotides, nucleoside, nitrogenous bases, and which are the key important bonds that are being produced in between all of these molecules. Now we will be starting from the Chagraf rule because this is the second lecture. Just to have a short recap about the last lecture that you would have heard is that in my last lecture I was talking about the xenonucleic acid. Now what is this xenonucleic acid? Xenonucleic acid is a new nucleic acid as compared to the DNA on RNA. It is an artificial nucleic acid. This xenonucleic acid is actually this XNA. This XNA which has been shown to you, this xenonucleic acid which is being shown to you, this is an artificially biosynthesized nucleic acid molecule. It is artificially biosynthesized, okay? This is the artificially biosynthesized. It is artificially biosynthesized nucleic acid, okay? This is artificially biosynthesized nucleic acid, okay? No, biosynthesized uh, nucleic acid in nature. Yes, okay, so here we are. Now, this bias, this is artificially nucleotide bias, uh, biosynthesized nucleotides that has been used in the predominant laboratories, especially to design the RDT, the experiments related to recombinant DNA technology. Now, these, these recombinant DNA technology related experiments have been designed by using this xenonucleic acid, okay? So as to prevent the slippage from the lab into the wild variety, you can just look there that this to prevent the slippage of the genetic information into the wild varieties, these are being used. Okay, next. After xenonucleic acid, we must talk about, we must clear all the drawing, and now we are going to talk about the next part. That is, which are the different components that are, that are associated. And now we will be talking about all the different components that are being associated with the genetic material. So, here we will be talking about the Chaga rule. Now see, the, the most fundamental rule. Please do mute yourself. What is this? Please do mute yourself. Otherwise, I will have to forcefully mute each and every candidate. Okay. Okay. Now, please look here. This is the Chaga rule that we would be talking about. Now, in the case of Chaga rule, what we would be talking about is that there, the Chargaff rule, where the questions have been asked in the CSR entrance examination, the base composition of DNA generally varies from one species to another. DNA isolated from the different species have the same type of base composition. Here, in simpler terms, Chargaff rule can be defined as, with the last lines, the molarity of A is equal to that of T and the molarity of G is equal to that of C. That means the amount of adenine is equal to the amount of thymine and the amount of guanine is equal to the amount of cytosine. This is what you have studied in your previous lectures. That means the amount of purine equal to the amount of pyrimidine. This is what you have studied in the case of Chargaff rule. But actually Chargaff rule can also be described by another methodology. There could be another methodology that could be used for describing this Chargaff rule. What is that? That in the case of this Chargaff rule, see, first question that has been asked in CSI, whether Chargaff rule is applicable to DNA to RNA molecules or to which type of nucleic acid it is applicable only to a double stranded nucleic acid that is to a DNA molecule. In the case of RNA molecules, see self complementary nature could be there and they could form a double stranded structure but those double stranded structures are either being formed by the overlapping of an RNA over itself such as in the case of tRNA, in the case of tRNA, you find that a single uh, structure overlaps over itself, then it leads to the formation of the secondary structure. It is, 
it is also the charge of rule is not even applicable in the case of single stranded dna molecule this is not applicable in the case of single stranded dna or the single stranded rna molecule okay okay just a second okay so now we will be moving forward now molarity of bases this is the molarity of bases which are being associated in the case of charge of rule see the different molecules have different molarity you can check out this molarity this molarity i'm just highlighting these molarities for homo sapiens for humans see the molarity the molarity is equals to purine divided pyrimidine is 1.01 so see the amount of purine is a bit larger than the amount of pyrimidine can anyone extrapolate why humans ke andar humans ke andar purines ka amount thoda zyada hai pyrimidine se aisa kyun hai क्यों प्यूरिन का अमाउंट ज्यादा है पिरमिडीन से क्योंकि हमारी टीलोमेरिक रिपीट्स पे जेनेटिक मटेरियल के टीलोमेरिक रिपीट्स पे क्या होते हैं प्यूरिन होते हैं सपोजिंगली इफ आई एम गोइंग टू मेक अ डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल देन ओवर द डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल टुवर्ड्स द टीलो टुवर्ड्स द एंड्स देयर आर टीलोमेरिक रिपीट्स व्हिच आर प्रेजेंट जस्ट अ सेकंड फॉर एग्जांपल इफ दिस इज द दिस इज द डबल स्टैंडर्ड क्रोमोसोम इन नेचर ओके दिस क्रोमोसोम विल हैव सर्टेन स्ट्रक्चर लाइक दिस now this is the end of the chromosome now if i am going to visualize this end of the chromosome this chromosomal end has certain repeat sequences and those are referred to as telomeric repeats can anyone here describe what is the telomeric repeat present in the case of humans g a a t d c yes this is the telomeric repeat that is present in the case of humans okay so this telomeric repeat okay t t a g g no sorry 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 t a t t c a no 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 g a a t t c ah uh, might be this would be the telomeric repeat that i have written i uh, will confirm it out mm, okay so there are telomeric repeats which are present and these telomeric repeats are the one which causes the increase in the amount of purine in the case of double stranded dna molecule so that is why there is an altered base ratio that we get in the case of homo sapiens now moving forward let us look at the extra diffraction pattern with through which we were able to visualize the first double stranded structure of dna the double helical model of dna structure was being visualized only through this historical extra diffraction picture that you are obtaining and here you are visualizing 3.6 angstrom spacing between the nitrogenous bases now look forward the double helical structure of dna was given by Fre uh, by francis crick everybody knows about them it was watson and crick who gave the double stranded structure of dna molecule now the same double stranded dna has a right handed helical turn over itself and the two strands of the dna runs in opposite direction with regard to each other these are the two strands of the dna that runs in opposite direction i have a dna molecule you can just look at my video also i am bringing a dna molecule for you all okay so at in my video i am having a double stranded dna molecule in front of the camera and this double stranded dna molecule indicates that the two strands are being wrapped in an anti parallel direction with regard to each other that is why they are anti parallel so we are saying it to be 5 prime to 3 prime and another strand is 3 prime to 5 prime now see the last point the most important point among this is that there are 10 base pair there are 10 base pairs that you would have studied in your previous classes in your class 10th class 12th you would have studied that there are 10 base pairs for helical turn but dear students it is not true there are exactly 10.4 number of base pair per helical turn and this one 10.4 number of base pair per helical turn was being proven via the the mica experiment which was being conducted in the later years so in the later years the mica experiment extrapolated that no it is not exactly 10 number of base pair per helix but actually it is 10.4 number of base pair per helix 
in the case of mica experiment what was being done again you focus on the video you so focus upon the camera and i would be explaining it to you so i have gotten here a piece of mica okay for you all i've gotten here a piece of mica now what was being done in the case of mica experiment you take this piece of mica you take a double stranded dna molecule and the double stranded dna molecule was being placed over a piece of mica i have placed this double stranded dna molecule over a piece of mica and then use the dna's in them once i used the dna in line then i was able to cleave this dna at specific nucleotide sequences maine kya kiya maine dna ko liya i have placed this dna over a mica and then used the dna in line in order to cleave this double stranded dna molecule into fragments and those fragments were then being analyzed over agrose gel electrophoresis you can look at my video please look at my video okay i am available there and i am doing this experiment okay i got the dna this is not calling supposedly this is a dna is enzyme and i am using this dna is enzyme to break the disulfide bonds the to break the phosphodiester bonds within the structure of the dna the dna is going to be fragmented now this dna would be fragmented into pieces and then over the electrophoresis gel what i am going to get i am going to get different bands over the electrophoresis gel all those bands when those were being analyzed what we got to our surprise to the surprise of all the scientists community they got a band at 21 base pair they got a band at 21 base pair this band at 21 base pair indicated indicated that no the repeating subunits are not that of exactly 10 base pair supposedly if the repeating subunits are those of 10 base pair then what would have happened which type of electrophoresis band would have been obtained the first electrophoresis band would have been obtained at 10 base pair sabse pehla kahan par aa jata 10 base pair mein fir kahan aa jata 20 pe aa jata fir kahan aa jata 30 pe aa jata lekin mile kaise bands 21 pe mila 42 pe mila 21 ke multiple mein milte chale gaye to yani ki sabse basic unit kya thi 21 21 ko bhi dna se kata to lagbhag ek aisa dna strand mila jiske length 10 base pair se zyada thi 11 se kam thi ultimately it was being found that yes the dna which is present in the cell has 10.5 number of base pair per helix lekin class 12th mein class 10th mein aise nahi samjhaya ja sakta tha aap logo ko wahan par student confuse ho jata are 10.4 number of base pair per helix kaise hoga ye kaise ho sakta hai aadha helix ke kaat ke hoga nahi 21 base pair ka ek band aaya electrophoresis mein isliye scientists ne ye conclude kiya ki 10.4 number of base pair per helix are present now see in the case csir asked a question about the number of base pair per helix every question is being solved by 10 point by taking the value to be 10.5 kyunki 10.5 se calculations aasan padti hai 10.4 se mushkil padti hai isliye csir ke jitne bhi questions hote hain sab mein aapko answer 10.5 ki calculation se hi karna hai there is a query of from one of the student okay everybody is able to understand it Ah, I was confused in that telomeric sequence TTA G G G. Oh, no problem with that. Uh, but you were correct, absolutely. Okay. Now, moving forward, I'm just closing my uh, video. Okay. Now, moving forward, after this, we move to the next slide. Now, this is very important. We see we are talking about the stability of the DNA molecule. Now, how this DNA is stable? Whether this DNA is effectively stable or this DNA is highly unstable molecule. So, for checking the stability of the DNA molecule, what we can do? We have to we have to denature the DNA molecule and then check about its stability. See, the DNA stability is not being maintained by the double helix. is not being maintained by the hydrogen bonding is not being maintained by the by the electrostatic interaction in between the phosphodiester backbone and the water molecule but majority of the dna stability is because of hydrophobic base stacking interactions you can just look here see the most important thing the hydrophobic backbone on the outer side of the duplex is the one that is responsible for the 75% of the dna stability due to hydrophobic base stacking interaction it is this hydrophobic base stacking interaction that is responsible for carrying out the dna stability 
Okay, so the DNA stability is being is being produced because of this hydrophobic base stacking interactions which are there. Okay, now there are within the structure of the DNA you can also find certain things. Now I'm just pointing out here. See, within the structure of the DNA you can find different groove-like structure. This is referred to as the major groove. Then there is uh, this is referred to as sorry the minor groove, and this is referred to as the major groove. The major groove. Okay, because the DNA is a helical structure in nature, so it has major groove as well as minor grooves present within its structure. Now see, because the nitrogenous bases at the minor groove and the major grooves are being exposed, as these are the places where the nitrogenous bases are being exposed. Now I have a double-stranded DNA in my video, okay, and you look at this double-stranded DNA molecule. When you are looking at this double-stranded DNA molecule, I'm just keeping a reference frame in its back to make it visible to you all much more effectively. Then you will find that there are places where the nucleic acids would be exposed, nucleic acid bases would be exposed. And it is this places that the proteins binds and influences the rate of transcription of the entire DNA sequence. DNA ke transcription ko kon regulate karta hai? Wo proteins jo ki major group pe bind kar sakti hai. So it is the one that proteins or motifs which protein binds to the DNA. See what is written? Particular proteins called motifs can interact with the major group of the DNA. See what is what are motifs? Motifs ki ek standard definition koi hai. What are motifs? Motifs are super secondary structure formed by the combination of alpha helix or the beta platelet sheet structure. Motifs are super secondary structure formed by the combination of the primary structure that is alpha helix or beta, the, formed by the combination of secondary structure, the alpha helix or the beta platelet sheet structure. And they helps in the binding of a protein to the DNA molecule. Supposingly, protein binds want to bind to this DNA molecule. It must have a motif. I have a pen. This lead of the pen that is helping in binding this pen to this DNA molecule is referred to as its motif. Okay, so this is how motifs bind to the DNA molecule. Now, what remains over the DNA is the minor group. Now. Another group that remains is referred to as the minor group. Now, in the case of minor group, because minor group is the place which is being exposed over the DNA. So, what is happening is that this minor group is the place where the drugs can bind and these drugs will influence the rate of transcription or translation of the DNA molecule. So minor group is the place where the drugs binds and then influences the rate of transcription or translation of the DNA molecule. Okay, so now, okay, we are moving forward. Majority of the pupils would have been shocked by my face. No problem. That is God gifted. Okay, so see, after that, we will be moving forward. But before we move forward, in Pathfinder, there are two things which have been told. Okay, okay, some data, uh, some certain data uh, I will have to uh, tell to you all. That's 25% of the DNA stability is due to hydrogen bonding, as well as due to, due to electrostatic interaction in between the water molecules and the phosphodiester backbone. 25% of the DNA stability is due to hydrogen bonding and, and the and the electrostatic interaction between the water molecule and the phosphodiester backbone of the DNA, whereas 75% is due to hydrophobic base stacking interaction. Now, what do you mean by hydrophobic base stacking interaction? For example, there are nitrogenous bases which are present. Uh, I'm trying to draw a benzene ring. I'm not very good at drawing. Okay, let me draw another one. Okay, this time it's far better. Okay, this is an aromatic ring. There is another aromatic ring of another nitrogenous base. The two nitrogenous bases are being kept one over the other. For example, this is adenine. There is thymine. Adne A will pair with T. Okay, there would be thymine present here. T will pair with A. Okay, there would be adenine present here. No issues with that. Now see, this ring, this ring, it will have an electrostatic ring circulating and this ring is going to interact with another ring. The ring of the adenine is going to uh, interact with the ring of the thymine and they will form a hydrophobic base stacking interaction. You just close your eyes and try to just memorize what I am saying. You just place coins one over the other. 
सिक्के लीजिए कॉइन लीजिए सिक्के लीजिए एक के ऊपर एक रखते चले जाओ हेलिकल मैनर में रखना है आपने गोल घूमती हुई सीढ़ी देखी है एक गोल घूमती हुई सीढ़ी ठीक है तो उस गोल घूमती हुई सीढ़ी के जो है वो ही डीएनए का मॉलिक्यूल है जो आपको यहां पर दिख रहा है देखो आप देखो ये देखो ये रही उस गोल घूमने वाली सीढ़ी की बीच में हेलिक्स और ये रही वो सीढ़ियां जो गोल घूमती हुई ऊपर की तरफ जा रही है Okay, this is how the structure of DNA is being oriented, and the electronic cloud of one nitrogenous base produces a positive charge over the nitrogenous base, and a negative charge under the nitrogenous base. It produces a positive charge over and a negative charge under the nitrogenous base. Again, a positive charge over the nitrogenous base, a negative charge under the nitrogenous base, and these positive and negative charge. Produced as a result of electronic cloud movement are the ones which are responsible for hydrophobic base stacking interaction. Hydrophobic base stacking interaction refers to the type of interaction which are being produced due to hydrophobic nature of the nitrogenous bases, and these electronic rings interact with each other, and it appears that the bases are stacked over one another it appears that each nitrogenous base is stacked one over another one over the other in a helical conformation producing the right handed double helical structure of the dna molecule okay moving forward now after this see why the dna is stable the dna is stable just for 10 to 15% via the hydrogen bonding the most important was base stacking interaction was the most important thing which was responsible for the stability of the dna molecule now moving forward polymorphism of dna now see dna can be of several different types you can find even a single stranded dna molecule at dna you cannot say that dna is always in double stranded form you can say that the dna could be single stranded it could be double stranded it could be quadriplex it could be triple stranded it could be quadriplex so here we are talking about double stranded dna but let me introduce firstly to you about the single stranded dna molecule so this is visible to you all if this is visible to you all i must write in it see dna can be single double or triple helical triple heli in nature uh, triple helical or quadriplex or quadriplex quadriplex in nature okay so the dna can be single double triple helical or quadriplex in nature okay so here we are talking about firstly about single stranded dna molecule so first is single stranded dna molecule single stranded dna molecule single stranded dna molecule it refers to a dna molecule which it refers to a single stranded dna as as is found in the case of certain viruses as is found in certain viruses such as 5x174 oh i will have to insert 5 using special symbols and special symbols are not permitted here please 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 focus on this okay such as 55x174 comma m13 forge okay or, or f filamentous forge filamentous forge these are single stranded dna molecules so the dna could be even single stranded in nature now here we are going to talk about the double stranded dna molecule as i was telling you dna could be single stranded in nature and the dna could be duplex double stranded in nature the double stranded nature of the dna could be explained here by the structure of the double stranded dna now please, please do mute yourself why you guys are unmuting yourself not able to understand okay now as i was telling you that uh, the dna structure which was there this dna structure was uh, what could have been a single stranded dna molecule as is present by x174 m13 s filamentous forge and etc and in others now what we have to talk about is about the double stranded structure of the dna molecule 
the double stranded structure of the dna molecule here can be represented by the a dna the b dna and c dna structures that are being visible to you all but there are but there are a characteristic feature of the three a b and z dna now what are the characteristic feature among the three the a b and z dna that we will have to understand now among that is is that in the case of a dna a dna is quite thick uh, is uh, is quite thicker as compared to the b dna where is uh, the diameter see this the diameter 2.55 nanometer b 2 nanometer and the z is 1.84 nanometer so the b, the a dna is the thickest okay so it is this a dna which has the thickest diameter uh, thank you krishna sir kk sir uh, all the questions will be answered by the kk sirs and i i will must focus upon my lecture so see you can remember the thing a a dna a dna is that candidate in your class who is the fattiest a dna aapki class ka sabse mota tagda teacher hai theek hai b dna kaun hai B DNA बीच वाला है B for बीच वाला ठीक है यानी कि ना तो ये मोटा है ना ये पतला है और Z DNA कौन सा है वो टीचर जो आपके स्कूल में सबसे पतला दुबला था जो हवा में ही उड़ जाता था Z DNA so it has the thinnest diameter A DNA has the thickest diameter now see rice per base pair the rice per base pair is 3.34 nanometer other things are not at all useful the z dna the z dna is left is left handed and the a and b dna are right handed now this confirmation on the dna whether it is right handed whether it is left handed i'm trying to explain it through the video come to the video you would be able to visualize me up okay when you would be able to visualize me up then we can look here okay come to the video and when you are able to visualize me up supposedly this is dna or uh, now if this dna the strands are circulated in a clockwise manner then the dna is right handedly coiled and if the strands are being coiled in an anti clockwise dna anti clockwise manner then the dna is left handed dna molecule okay so depending upon the confirmation or the or the or the rotation of the strands of dna over one another it could be it could be clockwise or right handedly coiled dna or it could be anti clockwise or left handedly coiled dna hindi mein bhi samajh lijiye ab aap log agar aapne dna ko dekha aur dna ko dekha aur clock ko dekha aur dna ke dono strands right handed direction mein ghoom rahe the to iska matlab ye kya ho gaya hai right handed dna bhai clockwise move kar rahe hain agar ye aap positive direction mein ek dusre ke upar hain maan lijiye pura dna mein khol diya ab dekhiye ab dekhiye fir se maine bind kara diya opposite direction mein so this is referred to as left handed dna molecule so the right handed dna molecule and left handed dna molecule can be differentiated from apart from each other on the basis of the orientation of phosphodiester backbone across each other in dono ka orientation in it decide kar deta hai kya ki dna left handed hai ya dna right handed hai now let us focus on the next point okay the next point is that about right about the glycosyl formation how does the glycosyl formation takes place so which are the glycosidic linkages which are present in the case of glycosidic linkages which are present there you will find glycosyl linkages are anti anti and in the case of z dna anti at cytosine and syn as at guanine in my last lecture please remember in my last lecture i was telling you about the syn and the anti conformation when the sugar when the sugar is being bounded to the nitrogenous bases and the sugar and nitrogenous bases are on the same side of the n glycosidic linkage then the condition is said to be syn else it is said to be anti now again move to the video i am here i am here describing you all the things now see if there is a bond if there is a bond which is being produced uh, let me have a just just for a second okay i have got in some dust see if this is a nitrogenous base if this is a nitrogenous base and if this is a sugar molecule this is a sugar molecule and there is a nitrogenous base and this nitrogenous base is away then this conformation is said to be the anti conformation 
and when this nitrogenous base the base moves to the same side then it is said to be the syn conformation if you're not able to uh, visualize then uh, 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 you are not able to uh, recollect it out we we'll look at the pathfinder uh, the same topic the with the diagram we will be able to explain what is syn what is nt and i would be doing that uh, just after finishing of this presentation okay so our standard book that we are going to follow is the pathfinder part 1 part 2 mcq plus any evolution and the catalyst book for solving the different mcq okay just close off the video and focus on the slides which are being provided okay see pdna relative humidity our cells have very high relative humidity so 92 percent of the dna which is present in our cell is actually because of the b dna it's present in the form of b dna molecule so b dna constitute uh, the 98 to 98 percent uh, of the dna molecule which is present in our cells okay next slide now the third type of DNA which is present uh, is referred to as the triple helical, uh, triple stranded DNA or the triple helical form of the DNA. Now see again the triple helical form of the DNA can be of two different types. One is, one is referred to as intra-chain triple helical, one is referred to as inter-chain triple helical or intra-chain triple helical and another one is called as inter-chain triple helical. Intra chain triple helical. Agar bhaiya double stranded DNA ke andar hi ek or strand apne upper coil kar gaya hai, to ise bolenge intra chain triple helical. Okay, it has coiled over itself. ठीक है, आप ऐसा समझ सकते हैं आपका double stranded DNA बाबर आमदेव बनने की कोशिश कर रहा था, coiling over itself. As it was trying to coil over itself, it lead to the formation of triple helical structure of the DNA molecule. See, this is how the triple helical structure is being produced. I will try to annotate it out. Okay, so if this is the double stranded DNA molecule, okay, this is the double stranded DNA molecule. Uh, I'm not able to draw the other strand. Sorry. And this is the strand, and this is coiled over itself. Then this is referred to as the triple helical structure of DNA molecule. Probably, no, I'm not able to draw the other strand. Sorry, this, this computer is not allowing me up here. So this could be of two different types. One, it could be the interchain, or the second one, it could be the intra chain triple helical structures okay those are the triple two different types of triple helical structures that are present the triple helical structure has a specific base pairing and that base pairing is commonly referred to as the hoogestein base pairing present within itself okay this is very 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 important see what is referred to as hoogestein base pairing i'm just writing a note here so that uh, you can understand it out see uh, somebody could uh, just recollect uh, that you are able to visualize this out or not. See, I have made a box. Anybody is able to visualize it out or not? Uh, yes. Oh, thanks a lot. So, see, there are two different types of base pairing. Okay. There are two different types of base pairing. Okay. Different types of base pairing okay which are the two different types of base pairing a is referred to as watson and crick base pairing and in the case of watson and crick base pairing what happens a base pairs with t and g base pairs with c now i didn't have any three uh, values okay uh, i'm just trying to do this oh sorry i don't know what happened i have used too many commands so the screen has moved just uh, round it uh, let me have yes actually i'm using so many commands on the this uh, pdf that is why the screen is not able to handle all those commands so okay so there are two different types of uh, uh, structures that are possible that one is referred to as the watson and crick base pairing another one is referred to as hoog steen base pairing base pairing in the case of hoog steen base pairing any base pairing except the a base pairing with t slash g base pairing with g base pairing with c 
See, I know that the G will base pair with C with three bonds, but there is no option available for me on in computer to make three bonds. So any base pairing except this is referred to as Hubistein base pairing. So what is happening in the case of Hubistein base pairing is T is not binding, is not binding with is not binding with A, but binds with another T, binds with another T. Okay, so this is the type of binding which is taking place. Normally T binds with adenine, but now the T is binding with time T. Okay, this is how we get, this is referred to as Hubistein base pairing. And see G, G has an exceptionally ability to bind with different molecules. G can bind with G, G can bind on one side with another molecule and on another side with another molecule as well as G can bind with on one side or with C and on another side it has an ability to bind with another molecule so it will lead to the formation of triple helical structure usually triple helical structures are being produced when one of the strand is uh, is purine rich while the other strand is pyrimidine rich. Note, majority of the triple helical structure, of the triple helical structure, helical, helical structures are produced when the, when one of the strand, when one DNA strand is purine rich while rich while the other is the other is pyrimidine rich pyrimidine rich okay you can go through all these notes from pathfinder and then all the queries could be answered in our whatsapp group on our messages on our facebook you just write the comments over the youtube where also wherever i will receive the comments i will answer try to answer the majority of your questions okay so this is what we are getting now in majority of the cases, the middle strand is made up of purine because see, purines have the have two different sites. It has imidazole ring as well as pyrimidine ring through which it can bind with hydrogen bonding to both the strands of the DNA molecule. Now moving forward, the last double strand, uh, the last form conformation of the DNA that is positive that that could be present is referred to as the G quadriplex. Now G quadriplex. In the case of telomere of the DNA, is a G rich sequence. T, T, G, 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 G. The 4G residues forms a plane like a structure. They form a plane like a structure. They form a planar structure that is being visualized here. This is a double stranded DNA molecule in nature. But this double has stranded DNA molecule has coiled over itself. Double stranded DNA molecule is coiled over itself. And there is a T and T. It is a T and T. आपस वाले T जुड़ चुके हैं, ठीक है? यहाँ पर तो क्या हो गया? चार G जुड़ चुके हैं, ठीक है? चारों G जुड़ चुके हैं और इन्होंने क्या बना लिया है? G quadriplex नहीं पार्लेजी नहीं बनाया है, इन्होंने कौन बोल रहा है? ठीक है? They have formed the G quadriplex structure. The four guanine residue constitute a plane which is stabilized by the Hubistein base pairing. यहाँ क्या बन गया है? Hubistein base pairing. Normal base pairing क्या होती है? Normal base pairing होती है adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. लेकिन base pairing कभी भी कहीं पे भी किसी को भी किसी के साथ भी भी हो सकती है और अगर कोई base pairing adenine और thymine guanine और cytosine के अलावा होती है तो उसे बोलते हैं wrong base pairing. Hubistein base pairing. That is entirely wrong base pairing. लेकिन बेस पेरिंग तो कहीं पे भी हो सकती है और प्यूरिन तो ऐसा है जो आगे भी बेस पेर कर लेता है और जो पीछे भी बेस पेर कर लेता है प्यूरिन हमारी क्लास का वो बंदा है जो इस क्लास में भी बेस पेर कर लेता है और दूसरे सेक्शन में भी वो बेस पेर करके बैठा हुआ है सच है स्मार्ट का है खैर हम आगे चलते हैं इसके अंदर सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द जी क्वाड्रिप्लेक्स व्हिच इज प्रेजेंट नाउ वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रोकैरियोटिक डीएनए सून इन आवर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर बिकॉज़ द क्लास इज गोइंग टू बी ओवर हियर ओनली I will uh, take my first class and Krishna sir will take his second uh, and the schedule will be shared with you from tomorrow for tomorrow. The lectures will be available over the YouTube. The today's uh, recorded lectures will be there on the YouTube. Your questions will always be answered whether on WhatsApp, whether on Facebook, whether on 
YouTube. So, okay, please do like, share, and subscribe this channel if you will be visualizing it on YouTube. Else, you can always attend our live classes. The class gets over for today. Tomorrow, we will be starting from prokaryotic genome and we will be teaching. We will be teaching through Pathfinder. I will be teaching through Pathfinder so that so that it could be made much more effective. Okay. Sir, so this G quadruplex is present in humans or not? Yes, yes, yes. Dear, the G quadruplex is present in humans. Just for a second, can you look at the video, the video of mine, and see here what I'm trying to explain it to you is that you look at the cuffs. You look at the cuffs of your T-shirt or the shirts that you wear. The ends of your cuffs are folded. They are being folded in order to protect the loss of clots from the end. देखिए कपड़े के एंड्स को जो कप्स होते हैं जहां पर आपका टी शर्ट का एंड होता है शर्ट का एंड होता है उसे फोल्ड क्यों कर दिया जाता है उसे फोल्ड बेटा इसीलिए कर दिया जाता है ताकि उस कपड़े को बचाया जा सके उसको डिग्रेड नहीं होने दिया जाए अगर इसे खुला छोड़ देंगे तो क्या हो जाएगा ईच एंड एवरी फाइबर विल गेट सेपरेटेड विल गेट सेपरेटेड अपार्ट ना सी इफ दिस इज अ डबल स्टैंडर्ड डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल एंड द एंड्स ऑफ द डबल स्टैंडर्ड डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल आर मेड फ्री देन व्हाट विल हैपन डीएनए इज विल क्लीव द द एंड्स ऑफ द डीएनए दैट इज व्हाई व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट द एंड ऑफ द डीएनए आर बीइंग फोल्डेड एंड व्हेन दे आर बीइंग फोल्डेड एंड देन जॉइन देन नन ऑफ द डीएनए will be able to cleave this end of the dna and enhancing the dna stability that is why g quadruplex as well as the triple stranded dna molecules are present in humans g quadruplex are present at sites where there is high magnesium ions where there is high ionic concentration and where the guanine is present in repeating subunits so this is all for today uh, i would have answered the question anybody else सर प्लीज एक बार हुक स्टील बेस पेयरिंग के नोट को रिपीट कर दीजिए अरे इट्स वेरी सिंपल एंड श्री श्रेया समझने की कोशिश करें देखिए बेस पेयरिंग कैसे होनी चाहिए बेस पेयरिंग होनी चाहिए ए यूजुअली ए एडेनिन बेस पेयर विद थायमिन एंड ग्वानिन बेस पेयर विद साइटोसिन लेकिन बेस पेयरिंग तो कभी भी कहीं पे भी किसी को भी हो सकती है तो यहां पर मैं ये बताना चाह रहा हूं अगर एडिनिन की थाइमिन के साथ में और ग्वानिन की साइटोसिन के अलावा कोई भी और बेस पेरिंग हो जाए तो उसे क्या कहते हैं क्या वो बेस पेरिंग नहीं है वो भी बेस पेरिंग है लेकिन वो है हुगस्टीन बेस पेरिंग लेकिन गलतियां सब चीज से हो ही जाती हैं और हमारा डीएनए भी ऐसी छोटी मोटी गलती कर ही देता है जिसके लिए हमारे पास में प्रूफ रीडिंग एक्टिविटीज हैं अगर डीएनए में गलती की है तो हम उस गलती को सुधार ही सकते हैं हमारे पास में बजरंग दल है ठीक है सो दिस इज हाउ द डीएनए प्रूफ रीडिंग एक्टिविटीज हैव द एबिलिटी टू सी इफ देर इज हुन बेस पेयरिंग टेकिंग प्लेस एट द रॉन्ग प्लेस देन इट शुड बी स्टॉप बट समाइम्स दिस हुन बेस पेयरिंग इज ऑल्सो यूजफुल फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन द केस ऑफ uh triple extended dna at the telomeric ends in the case of g quadruplex this hook stream based pairing is important so each and everything has its own importance bonding has its own importance the normal watson and crick based pairing has its own importance and the hook stream based pairing has its own importance watson and crick based pairing bhi zaruri thi aur hook stream interaction bhi zaruri tha जरूरी था हुगस्टीन इंटरेक्शन ताकि हम ट्रिपल हेलिकल स्टैंडर्ड डीएनए मॉलिक्यूल बना सके और डीएनए की स्टेबिलिटी को हम ट्रिपल हेलिकल बना के उसे और ज्यादा स्टेबल बना सके दैट्स ऑल आई एम फिनिशिंग माय क्लास ऑल ओवर हेयर ऑन दी वी वुड बी मीटिंग यू सून देयर आर क्वेश्चंस सर इज देयर एनी मॉडिफिकेशन रिलेटेड टू ट्रिपल और क्वाड्रुप्लेक्स डीएनए आ सी देयर आर मेथाइलेशंस देयर फास्फोराइलेशंस देयर आर एस्टाइलेशंस दैट कैन effectively that can effectively increase or decrease the level of formation of triple helical dna molecule because when you phosphorylate a nitrogenous base when you methylate it out or when you acetylate it up the bonding pattern began to change so these three things can lead to different modification of the triple helical structure we would be talking with pathfinder because pathfinder would be our basic book that we would be following for this entire tenure for the entire tenure of 7 months if you would be with us okay and then we will be solving all the questions you just go through that book and from that if you find any query any question you just put it in the whatsapp or in our group or just message me or text me out okay 
Rake, my good student, yes, Raj has just entered into the classroom and the class is over. Okay, yes, so I will meet you tomorrow. Okay, at the same time, bye-bye. Thanks a lot.